Welcome to the pod bay door. Hello out there in the verse. This is the pod bay door. Please join us every Tuesday for informed discussions on new and upcoming movies, games, and tech. And if you love Las Vegas, stay tuned because as Vegas insiders, we can give you a unique perspective on its history, provide insider information, and reveal the unknown secrets of our town, Vegas. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. We're glad you're with us. And hey, if you get the chance, subscribe to us and give us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Also, check in with us on our YouTube channel at the Pod Bay Door Podcast. What is a podcast? It seems to run on some form of electricity. Rain Man? Yeah. Let's play some parts. Yeah. Because I can go on busting you up all night. Pay that man his money. Respect is all you have left in the morning. Hi, everybody. Welcome. We are back here at the poker table because this is the poker special. I got Adam with me at the table. Hi, Adam. Hey, what's going on? And Sam is back with us. He's remote. Uh, he's calling in. Sam, welcome back. How you doing? What's Thank up, you. What's up, Sam? Uh, coming up on this episode, uh, we will discuss uh, Dead Man's Hand. It's a Las Vegas poker scene. Everything uh, uh, that hopefully everybody needs to know when they come into town regarding poker. A little bit of history. Uh, I found uh, really some cool things, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, Las Vegas mountains targeted by SJWs. You guys know what SJWs are? Social justice warriors. Oh gosh! Okay, yes. people with signs. Your, and, uh, it's your generation, guys. You and Sam. I'm telling we you. We love to pick the it. hippies. Yeah, the hippies. Yeah, the new age hippies. Like they have any idea what a hippie is. <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, we're going to swing through the topless report, nerd alert, uh, gear grinders, and Area 52. Uh, keep those comments and show suggestions coming in. We love them. Every one of them, uh, worldwide, uh, we, we have, uh, gosh, downloads uh, from uh, all parts of the globe except Montana. No, every, every Montana. Time. They have if computers in Montana. Come if on. anybody listening and knows somebody in Montana, I need that. I need to get that on the map. It's mm-hmm. almost the last one. Uh, but thank you so much, and uh, let us know you're out there, uh, even just to say hi. Uh, Simone J L V Angel commented off of uh, Player uh, Are there any? Are there any all female poker tournaments in Las Vegas? Yes, there are. Yeah. In fact, it's a it's the big one. Uh, uh, the <laughs> we sop. Uh, the uh, <laughs> the uh, World Series of Poker uh, for years uh, has uh, a female tournament, and for years, just as just as I would expect, some bunch of knob men try to get into it. Oh, nice! Yes, players disguised. N- no, no, they they want into it because, of course, they feel it's unfair. You know, why should they be disallowed? And I'm like, well, what? because it's an all female tournament, you're shitbag. You can get any other that. tournament you want, except for this one. Yeah. It Stop just, your whining. Yeah. It's just, it's the Hooters thing all over again. Why am <laughs> I? Why can't I be a male Hooters guy? Yeah. Why do, why, why do you want that? I don't know. I don't know. But yes, there absolutely is. Uh, that is the only one I can find, however. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I did not find any information regarding any other all female tournament sponsored by anybody else. So good job, uh, World Series of Poker. Well, it's a it's a pretty fine uh, percentage, I would say, of female um, poker players. So, yeah. you know, they'd have to get together in Vegas to do that. Yeah, you, you know, know n- not being a huge fan of the of the telecast tournaments, um, you know, I don't know uh, of any of the female stars, but um, well, I, one I of them's uh, Jennifer Tilly. Oh my gosh, you're right, Sam. <laughs> Jennifer Tilly, I have seen her. Yeah, yes, she, sir. She you're is. welcome. She, thank you. You're very you're welcome. welcome. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> she she's an odd duck, though. I don't know if I want her sitting down at my table. She seems like she would talk a lot. Yeah, and she used to be gorgeous. Though. She used to yeah. be really cute. Yeah, yeah. But we all get older. Well, there's yeah, there's always you know um, ESPN coverage of the poker tournaments, right? And and they do focus on the ladies. Yeah. Um, but not they don't make it to the final table very often. Really? Um, yeah. So now why is that? You know, I'm not sure. Cause well, because the fields are huge. Because the girls, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I've played with a few <laughs> ladies, and they they tend to be a little crazier on the table. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. There's some good poker players, too, but yeah. we don't want to mess with the old Asian ladies. They're like stones, though. No, man. I don't, yeah, it's just bad They're luck. They're hardcore. Yeah. No, bad luck. What were you saying earlier, Sam? You, the, the, what's, your, what's your kryptonite on the table? Old, old Asian oh. dudes? 
Yeah, old like Mr. Miyagi type dudes. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. Just, like if I'm if I'm running a table and suddenly a Mr. Miyagi shows up, then I'm totally fucked. <laughs> he just steals all your mojo. Well, Sam, yeah. Sam is as tall as three Mr. Miyagi, so you know you could just, <laughs> just just pound him, man. Just knock him off the chair. Uh, but uh, Simone, uh, Jay, thank you for your question, and um, and yes, uh, come on into Vegas and enjoy a women's tournament. Uh, still at the Rio, yeah. Still at the yeah, currently, yeah. yes. Yeah, still at the Rio. Um, a special report I have for everybody because I was um, I was mistaken. Our friend and a friend of the show, John Thorpe, he did go with his son to Psychofest, the heavy metal um, uh, extreme concert series. And uh, uh, not only did he go and said it was very well run, it was very, uh, very controlled. Uh, lots of people having a lot of good, uh, good times. Uh, he also included the, the, there are two bands, I believe, that were there. Carcass, Arch Enemy, they were actually at the uh, concert and, pre- and performed, uh, and Gogeta, but he made, made, uh, made me aware that all three of these bands are vegan. <laughs> and including Carcass, uh, so which I think is fantastic. Right, I think we had made fun last episode that you know the rock metal bands, you yes. know, are, why would they be vegans? You know, right. they love their meats and exactly. whatever. But yeah, there yeah. you go. There's bands that are actually vegan. Yeah, yeah. who so would have known? So the goats they kill on stage, they actually don't eat. <laughs> uh, Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> fun fact. But, uh, but uh, uh, again, I, I I can't. I just can't imagine. Our friend John, uh, he's a little bit older than I am, uh, and he's a, he's a you know a professional, and I just I, I can't imagine John sitting in the middle of this you know giant Lord of the Rings you know kind of mass <laughs> of people, uh, but uh, he he is our he's our man in the field. He doesn't look like a mosh pitter. No, no. no. I mean he's he's scrappy though. He's I bet he's wiry. Yeah, wiry. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't forget he does have his trail mix. Right, he's got a trail mix. He's it probably no. He's, I, <laughs> I can't imagine he's that. Yeah. But uh, but he's our man in the field when it comes to insane metal rock and roll shows. Shows, yeah. There you go. But uh, yeah, so carcass, carcass. Uh, the, that's me, the men of carcass are vegetarians. Wow. Okay. Uh, thanks, John, for that. The more you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, the topless report. Where are they naked? I got some good ones. They're naked now again. Always naked always. again. I should say, where are they naked again? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sp- I, I missed this one. I missed this one. I, and I apologize to, to my, my f- co-hosts. Uh, it was in July, but I have to mention it. Okay. It was that good though. Well, it was, it was only because, uh, the, uh, airlines have been in the, uh, in the news for problems of late. Wow. Um, so Spirit Airlines. Have you been on Spirit? Mm. Where you wear all of your clothes at one time? It's been a long on. time since I've yeah. actually been on an airplane. Yeah. yeah. They, they charge an extra baggage fee for your wallet. Um, uh, Spirit Airlines flight was delayed. Uh, this is in July, I, can, uh, I believe, uh, on the, the like 19th. Uh, delayed uh, on a Saturday morning in Las Vegas after a passenger who was already seated took all of his clothes off and ran up to, uh, to discuss that with the flight attendants. Oh, nice. Yes. It was party time. Yes, it was party yeah. time. Right. Yeah. Before they took off? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Where were, <laughs> Brilliant. where were you, Sam, yeah. on July 19th? I <laughs> they didn't show a picture of the guy. I thought maybe you had kind of lost it and gone on Spirit. No, um, they would know if it was Sam. That's true. I, I would never fly Spirit. That plate. That plate. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but needless to say, uh, they, they didn't have... Um, uh, they don't have marshals on those flights, so they actually had to deal with this guy themselves, which they did. Did they tase him? Uh, not that I'm aware did of. Did they tase no. him? Yes. No, but uh, yeah. the authorities. What you get? Yeah, they were still at the gate. Uh, the authorities were called. He was removed, um, and apparently they were less than a half an hour late. So good job, Spirit. Wow. For, for the uh, must have drunk him off like that Asian doctor. That's right. But do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you uh, go. So, uh, so see, even even just on airplanes in Las Vegas, there's there's nudity. Right. Yeah. You think I you think you're lucky with a like rug burn? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was gonna say you you think you're lucky leaving Las Vegas, and then boom, naked people still. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it's so everywhere. You got a last minute slot machine and a last minute uh, last naked last people. minute show. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, now, secondly, in the top of the report, uh, um, there was a report that I read, and this was about a week ago. 
Now, granted, it was by one of those citizen journalists. You, you were okay, those? the bloggers. Yeah, S, uh, the, SJW the, the, citizen uh, journalists. Uh-huh, okay, think their phone is a camera. Well, yeah, you know, and oh, I geez. bet you that naked guy had somebody with a phone that was taping him, and that's oh, yeah. probably on YouTube yeah. making a million oh, hits right now. I'm sure, I'm sure. But uh, there was a report that Las Vegas clubs, and when I t- mean clubs, I mean uh, dancing clubs, the nightclubs, uh, were with going the, to relax the dress code and relax the the rules on nudity. Uh, and I believe they meant uh, uh, the, the, like the go-go dancers and things of that nature. Not the cr- okay. not the crowd can be naked, uh, but that is absolutely false. The the clubs are not. Uh, I actually called a friend of mine, and uh, he was aware of that uh, report, and he that's absolutely false. Huh. He said it, it, he said yeah, even it, it, if they were considering relaxing the dress code, they're not. They're actually going to bump it up. They want people dressed nicely in the clubs. Yep. They want well. They want people dressed at all, and they correct. Want, they want them dressed nicely. Um, so absolutely false. But uh, but uh, you know it's interesting. People are reporting on this kind of stuff. Um, it's uh, you know I, I it's the internet. Well, Jamie, you've been to a few strip clubs. What's I the dress code? What's the dress code? Dress code in strip clubs. Oh yeah. gosh. Uh, if you mean the patrons, uh, honestly, I, I've uh, minus the people that 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 you know are are there far too often. Um, and wander in from the street because they're normally not located in, in great areas. Um, That's uh, why they have not bouncers. Bad. Not bad because it's mainly men uh, coming for a bachelor party. They're well dressed. They're either uh, you right, know slacks or, or jeans. Right, they're know, conventioneers, they're still in their suits and ties. Yeah. You know, so it's really not that bad. And now, of course, you know couples are welcome at strip clubs. Uh, so so everybody's dressed really well. You know, so uh, th- yeah, it, there's no reason to relax dress codes ever anywhere. <laughs> You know, wear something nice. Um, but uh, uh, I, I love the fact, though, that uh, that everybody, you know, if it hits the Internet, there is a portion of time that it's true. Oh, before it gets, yeah. like, fact-checked. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it, there, there's a strange sort of gray cloud, um, you know, a undead army <laughs> thing that happens with all these stories. And until the light beams on them and, and proves them to be false, uh, that they're, they're true, which is, is the old adage about the Internet. Well, yeah. it's on the Internet, it's true. Yeah, whatever you read. That's right. It's the opposite. So we can, can consider it as uh, alternative facts? Alternative facts, yes. yes. That's, that's a nice way to put that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, how, that's how the media likes to put it. It is. It is. Oh, yeah. yeah. The fake news? The fake news. The fake yeah. news, yeah. No, the, this this country is in trouble. It's right? all fake news. That's right. It's all fake news. <laughs> uh, no, this country's got some troubles uh, uh, troubles ahead. But uh, uh, there was actually a naked person on a plane. You can look. That there was a naked person. Yes. <laughs> so. there, yeah. Look it up. Uh, Spirit Uh But uh, we let's go to some fun things. Time for uh, nerd alert. It's time for Adam. Nerd alert. Nice. We're gonna jump into some poker stuff. But before that, um, I feel like we need to cover Game of Thrones um, because last week was freaking epic. Uh, Sam, where do you want to start with that? Uh, shit. I we should probably start with. Uh, I put him on the spot. Let's just the, start with the. Let's the just dragon. start with the dragon, man. The we dragon, are, the ice dragon. The dragon. So Daenerys's dragons and the and the undead army finally met. Right. It's been like seven seasons. The army of the dead's been walking for like a million miles. Yeah. They finally met up, and the dragons were decimating him. And the night king comes out, and with one spear, just kills a dragon in yeah. one spot yeah. like just one toss like perfect toss yeah like That's he was in the olympics yeah i think he knew they were coming to be honest i think he was waiting for him yeah oh because uh, he's bran that's possible no, that's i thought it was Jon snow no <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> we don't know I mean, there, there's stories now that all these they're they're positing all these possible things is Jon snow yeah. is bran well you gotta love the internet for like yeah. all the the random theories yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. Um, like Jar Jar Binks being, uh, you know, a Sith Lord, that type of thing. Oh, jeez. You know, so yeah. they can make up anything they want. No, Jar Jar is a '70s black actor. <laughs> 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 uh, but anyway, so after the battle, the Night King resurrects this dragon, and uh, and now he's got this undead uh, dragon on his side. But where did so he get the chains, though? That's my question. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, that's debatable. Who cares? But. But he's got a dragon now. That's the important part. So now the the tides have turned. That's right. And uh, then uh, the got, biggest irk for Adam was uh, homeboy running so quick. Oh, dude, Gendry, 
It just landed like one shot. Who was running quick? So they sent Gendry back to oh, right. the wall, right? To right. send a, ra- a raven to get the dragons. Right. Yeah. Well, that all happened in the span of like, what, like four minutes of the show that was an hour and 20 minutes well, long? You know, there's portals. <laughs> there's, there's portals everywhere. Right. Come on. It's magic. Yes, right. Uh, just go with it. Yeah. They Move. got they got the chains from the portal and he Yeah, went exactly. Into exactly. Yeah, come on. Uh, yeah, it's 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 funny how fast they got there, but you know well, you, got got to, you got to the good stuff. It's it's a little bit lazy writing, I would say. Um, you know, give us a little bit of time frame so yeah. that we're not guessing that it's five minutes later that, you know, Gentry reigned it to the wall. Yeah. Uh, True. Well, they got to hit it. But then again, they're in a rush. Well, yeah, I know. They're they're, they're on the rush. That's the problem. That's what the lazy writing comes in. You know, they only have six episodes, and and now they feel like they got to, you know, cut filler. Um, Which, you know, it's debatable that that's good. You know, you get to the good action parts. Uh, But we only got one episode left. Well, they already leaked it. It's out. Did they? Yeah. The uh, the HBO hack? Yeah, but nobody cares. Thanks to the internet, everything's leaked nowadays. Yeah, nobody cares though. Nobody wants to watch it that way. Right. You know, and 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 I think that's why HBO, HBO. There was a story I, that I read that HBO was considering um, releasing early, airing it early. Yeah, and but you know what? That's just that's just kowtowing to these idiots. Um, no one cares. Everybody wants a quality viewing of of Game of Thrones. They right. want to, you know, they want to see everything as it uh, as it's supposed to be broadcast. You know, and I'm glad, I'm thrilled they didn't pay these guys, and uh, uh, hopefully they'll they'll get their comeuppance, but I doubt it. Well, you know, it's on, it's streaming, so you get it as soon yeah. as it's out, anyway. Yeah, so, exactly. You know, people like to get together and actually watch these things. I know. You know, we're going over to Felix's house to watch the finale. So yeah, no, no. Why would we want to watch it early? Yeah, can you imagine you and your buddies clamoring around a laptop watching? Yeah, some watching hack the, uh, with, with a time uh, code on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. No, screw yeah, that. No. Uh, it's it's different nowadays, you know. You get it at the speed of digital. I know. You it's know, great. So. Oh no, it's it's great. Uh, so yeah, one episode left in Game of Thrones. Pretty excited. Looking we'll see what to. happens. Yeah, looking forward they're to gonna it. have a big meeting with all the the heads of the kings and queens. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Good well, times. This is a huge weekend. This is a huge weekend. Uh, fight night for Vegas. Yeah, in for, for Vegas. Yes. I mean, fight night. Uh, by, this fight night. This is the, you know, this will all be over by the time uh, this, but this cast is out. But fight night followed by Game of Thrones. I mean, there's going to be little parties yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Different kind of parties, though. Definitely. <laughs> now tonight's the, the McGregor uh, uh, Mayweather fight. Oh, uh, should be epic. Should you know make millions and millions. Like, can't believe people get paid a hundred bucks for that shit, though. I mean, seriously. Well. Get together with a group of friends. That's all I can say. Yeah, pass. They'll okay. make their money. Yeah. <laughs> this could be the end of boxing. This could be history. You know. Oh yeah. I don't think we'll so. see. With yeah. all the prop bets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess my hope is that that it's that, like the Super uh, Bowl, Sam. Yeah, I, I hope that that Mayweather wins because then then the whole issue of the MMA it the, can just the, drop. Oh my God, yeah, yeah. But um, I'm telling you, if if, if uh. McGregor wins. Yeah. That could be the end of boxing. You yeah. know, for him just to step in the ring. Well, they were saying that uh, if McGregor wins, that it's going to hurt Vegas a lot, like, as in payout wise. Why is that? Because everybody's. Well, because everybody's, everybody's expecting on. Mayweather to take it. So if McGregor does come up on this fight, then that's a lot of payouts throughout all of Vegas. You know what I mean? Like all the. Yeah. Sports well, book. they've had upsets before, you know, and, yeah. and Vegas has taken hits. Yeah. Um, but you know, well, I think uh, last year when the Patriots came back to win the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. uh, Vegas oh, was pretty geez, was yeah. pretty happy on that one right. because the odds were with the Patriots for sure. Right, but uh, uh, well, we'll uh, yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll update next week. We'll I'm sure uh, I'm sure that'll be big news. Yeah, that's gonna yeah. be. As you can tell, we we all sound very excited about the Conor McGregor fight. No, I'm more interested. Well, in, I mean, I'm gonna go watch it. Yeah, I'm more we'll interested in talking about the you know the aftermath. So that'll right. be that'll be great yeah, for, I agree. for the next cast. That'll be better f- um, podcasting material. Yeah, for sure. True. So, all right, let's get into some poker stuff. I guess some like some random stats, and I guess I'll start with um, prop bets since Sam already kind of mentioned that on that uh, on that note, and just for the World Series of Poker in particular because they have you know bets for everything. Sure, um, it's just like the Super Bowl or the fights. You yeah. know, uh, some random prop bets um, that I did see. Was you could bet on uh, celebrities because there's always a, a oh, yeah. you know group of celebrities that go and play yeah. poker. They never make it very far, yeah. um, but they like no. to play. Yeah. And one that I saw that made me laugh in particular was Michael Phelps. Who will make it farther, Michael Phelps or Kevin Hart? 
and then you could bet either way. Um, I, I believe that Kevin Hart was the favorite. Really? Um, from what I looked. Really? Uh, yeah. Now, see, I, I, having just seen Kevin Hart on a f- strange little uh, hot wing thing yeah. on YouTube, um, I would say that Michael Phelps would because Michael Phelps is more even keeled. He, you know, his decision making would be slow and precise, and and Kevin Hart because he's so energetic, it would be it would be um, a little more kinetic. Uh, oh, definitely, you'd have more of a show. Yeah, I imagine that he could get under people's skin a lot easier. Oh, sure. Whereas Michael oh, Phelps easily. would just be like, you know, yeah. the the one shot of him where he's all like, you know, got the <laughs> puss face on and, right. and he's got the headphones <laughs> in. That would be him at a poker table, That's right? right? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> With a little bit of weed, right? In yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Take a little break here and there. That's right. Um, so another one, obviously, you can bet on the favorites. Okay. And this year, the two favorites were Negranu, and, which I know you. Oh, he's you my favorite. Oh, and yeah. and uh, Phil Ivey who always seems to be kind of the favorite. Yeah. Um, but, you know, these guys are, are in a huge field. Um, so these guys were plus 10,000 yeah. in their odds to win the main event. Because, you know, these, sure. this um, last year there was 7,221 entrants. Really? Yeah. So... So um, your odds are... Uh, at so t- it's still 10 grand uh, uh, ten grand. 10 grand buying. Yeah. So, so the explosion with poker happened when Chris Moneymaker, greatest name ever, oh, I remember. Uh, won in 2003. And never won again, though, did he? No. No. Uh, one-time winner. And in that time, the field was 839 people. Wow. Uh, what year was that? That was 2003. Wow. And he won $2.5 okay. million. Dollars. Yes, I remember that. Uh, Clear so up. then uh, three years later, mm-hmm. the field... More than it's more than ten times that number. Yeah. Eight thousand seven hundred and seventy three people. Wow. The biggest pot ever, twelve million. That and that sort of answers a question I had about its popularity. Yeah. However, I have to say that um you don't its marketing ha- has really decreased. Whereas the people in the entries have increased, obviously. I don't see much of it in town. I don't. They, they don't talk as about the World Series. As far as advertising yeah. for the poker tournaments? Now, I don't know about other outside markets. Like, I, well, in, I, in Phoenix, they don't advertise. I don't see it in L.A. Um, uh, I don't know about the East Coast. No, you're right. Yeah. I if you're not in the scene, it would be hard to yeah. know what's coming. But, I mean, uh, you're talking in, in what, uh, 14 years it's shown. Wow, a, a huge percentage spike. increase. Well, all right, so I wrote this, so it's 2003 to 2006. In okay. three years, mm-hmm. it jumped from 800 people to 8,000. And then last year, uh, 11 years later after mm-hmm. that, it's at 7,000. So it's kind of... It's leveled. It's leveled a okay. little bit, right? So yeah. the hype went away, yeah. you know, obviously, you know, but there's still 7,000 people that come in where 10,000, yeah. you know, entering uh, uh, $10,000 a Sounds pound. Sounds like 7,000 suckers. No. Oh, uh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, and the, and this year's pot was $8.1 million. Okay. To the winner. Oh, all to the winner? To the winner. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was, that nice. was yeah. Does he get the full hit. pot, or does the casino get a piece of that, too? <laughs> well, I'm sure the casino well, is making Sam. their fair share. Uncle, yeah. yeah, Uncle Sam gets it. <laughs> um, I wanted to go over some of the winners of, of the World Series poker. And some, yeah. So, so Phil Helmuth. Boo. Yeah, boo, <laughs> right? Um, he actually has the most World Series of Poker bracelets um, mm-hmm. at 14. Okay. Uh, he's been, and he's, I'm sure he lets everybody he's know. He's known as the poker brat. Sure. Um, yeah. So, yeah. He's, uh, he's the yeah, loud and in real life, he's a dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've met him a couple times at the Palms, right? Yeah. Um, some of those big-name guys used to come through there. Oh, yeah. Um, and then the next biggest winners are uh, um, Doyle. Chan and Ivy all at 10 bracelets. Doyle Brunson? Doyle Brunson. Okay. Um, we all know his hand. Uh, he won a couple of bracelets with 10 deuce. Yes. Um, so that now is the Doyle Brunson hand. That's the Doyle Brunson. Uh, yeah, right. pretty funny. Uh, Johnny Moss and Stu Unger are the only ones with three wins in the World okay. Series of Poker. Okay. Uh, Moss was the original winner um, yes. and actually won the first two World okay. Series of Pokers. Um, and then also won in, uh, he won in 70, 71 and 74. Mm-hmm. So the first three out of five, he won. Yeah. Pretty impressive. Now, before uh, coming up uh, in, in a segment uh, about the history of it, um, 
that in the 70s, they, they, they have it uh, starting officially in 70, right? Um, I believe 70 was the first year, 70, but yeah. I want to say 69 was like an unofficial year. Right. And prior to that, for at least five years there, it was completely unofficial. Yeah. It was real when, underground. When the, yeah. When and it was real, only like five guys. When the real men would play yeah. over at Benny's. Exactly. Yeah. And so then, we'll, we'll run through that later. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, the guy by name of Jack Strauss won in 1982. Okay. And this was a guy that... Um, he was he, naked. <laughs> he was naked. <laughs> no. So this was the uh, the guy that found a five hundred dollar chip when he thought he was out, and he oh, went on to yeah. win the World Series. Right. Yeah. So a chip in a chair. That's where that came chip from. Chip in a chair. Chip in a chair. Right. If you got All a chip right. in a chair, you got a chance. All right. Right. So this guy won the World Series with one chip. Wow. Yeah. It's like the so FedEx guy saving FedEx uh, by uh, by uh, playing the slot machine. You heard that story? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, the, no, I didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they, we covered that one time. Yeah, the CEO, the of, Fed, CEO of FedEx. They were dead, uh, and he ended up uh, gambling his gambling money. And he won, he won. I want to say that was roulette. I think it was. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. that was that's terrible a good game. One. To yeah, 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 right? God, yeah. <laughs> uh, gosh. Well, oh, you know, I totally forget some of these uh, prop bets. So another one was uh, you could bet on the last flop of the World Series. So the very last hand, okay. whatever that may last be, five, yeah. just the flop though. Is it going to be all black? Is it yeah. going to be all oh, red? Geez. Is yeah, it going to be right. two black and one red? Is yeah. it going to be two red and one black? So you can bet on all that stuff. We'll take it all. Um, thought nice. that was funny. You could bet on, bet. on yeah, the, the winning hand for yeah. the World the Series. Right. Um, two pair better or <laughs> one pair worse. Right. You know, that's the odds on those. Um, also the winner, uh, you can bet on his age. Tw 27 <laughs> or older. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, which <laughs> is funny because that's really young. Um, it is very young. Yeah. Joe Joe Cata won uh, a few years back, twenty one yeah. years old. Was he really twenty one? And he won millions of dollars. Yeah, barely can be um, in the room. These guys, if you look at the age range, yeah. you know of winnings of World Series of poker, mm -hmm. it's dra dropped dramatically. Oh, like, yeah. We know, of course, the the influx of, of you know the the fret kind of poker weenie, you know, yeah. has just dropped the age completely. But oh, uh, it is. It yeah. Is. Uh, another couple of odds. I wanted to uh, just throw these out there. One that I've actually done um, at a poker table at Red Rock. Uh, okay. Flopped a Royal Flush. Really? Yeah, flopped a Royal Flush. The only Royal Flush I've ever had in my life. Um, the odds of doing that, uh, one in 650,000. Damn. Yeah. So you can't um, you can't build that though. You're, you're flopped out. Or you're like I mean you can't, you can't, can't go any. Yeah, it's <laughs> hard to. I mean, how do you get like, any better than that? How do you play that hand? It's bizarre. Oh, yeah. No, you yeah. you bluff like you don't have anything. Yeah. You wait for people to bet. Um, the odds of you being dealt pocket aces. Yeah. Two hundred and twenty to one. Wow. Uh, the odds of getting a blackjack, one in twenty. So okay. there's your obvious, you know, one in so twenty on a on a six deck on a single deck on a single deck. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so we're flopping a royal flush. I never wow. never thought I could do that. It's Wait, you won the hand. I'm I did, and yeah. I got a little bit of a uh, a high hand bonus from the casino. Okay, I think it was like five hundred bucks, oh, nice. which wasn't too bad. At Red Rock, uh, yeah, Red that's Rock. really awesome. And they're stiff over there. Yeah. yeah, they got a lot of tables there. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad poker table uh, poker yeah. room. But uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, as an aside, uh, uh, the Benny's Benny Binion, the Horseshoe, uh, classic poker place, actually yeah. where where the World Series started started, um, uh, is no longer the room. They moved the mm. tables in the main casino, mm. and they reduced them from ten to four. It's very sad. Time. Yeah, yeah, it's very yeah. sad time because those they don't get the business there anymore. No, now they just that's too uh, bad. You know, just walk by and all kind well, of. That's all at Bellagio or. or I'm sure we'll get into that too, but yeah, I've got a big a poker room. Yeah, yeah, I got a fun list. Yeah, yeah, that's all I got for right now. We'll all get right, into some cool. other poker stuff with Jamie on the nice. concierge. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna roll right into it. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 poker, real quick history. Poker. Uh, uh, Europe saw its first playing cards in 1360. Um, they they uh, they are thought to have come right. from Egypt, arriving through Venice, which was the trading port at the time. Okay. Uh, they were also found uh, prior to this um, uh, types of playing cards in China, India, and Persia. But this particular deck was uh, a, 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 an Islamic deck called a Mamluk, um, and uh, consisted of four suits with 13 different ranks. So they, uh, uh, they were very similar yeah, to what we have very now. Very similar. Yeah. Uh, the, and then uh, fast forward, 14th century Europe, uh, uh, different styles, different types of things. And, of course, people came out of the, uh, out of the woodwork cheating. And uh, they, they developed uh, what's called the European suit system to try to uh, address this. Eliminate some yeah. of that. And it allowed a wider variety, variety of games and a w uh, more oversight. Uh, but um, uh, th that's where the poker, that's where 
poked its head out. No pun intended. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Uh, and then uh, one of the earliest pieces uh, of writing on poker was called um, An Exposure of the Arts and the Miseries of Gambling. So it was already <laughs> it was already miserable uh, yeah. back in the, the Europe, and his and his name was Jonathan H Green in 1834. Um, he wrote about how the game was spreading and how the the a huge large and a much larger role on the riverboats on Mississippi uh, okay. they were playing and introducing yeah. the game to new people, and he was the first one to call it or coin the cheating game. That's actually what it was called prior to being called poker. But when he found out that the game was not being featured in American Hoyle, uh, which of course are yeah, card makers, the card, they, yeah, yeah, game maker, book. yeah, but uh, they were the authority on games back in the day, yeah. uh, and so he decided to yeah. name it poker. The yeah. lying game, though, huh? The li- cheating, cheating game, no, the cheating, cheating, the cheating game. game. Yeah. Okay, because yeah, he bluffs. Yeah. You got to bluff a lot. Yeah, which is amazing how it, uh, how it in, in a very short span of time it became. Uh, tainted i guess <laughs> you know there's there's always hucksters out there that are trying to do that kind of, um now the uh the of course we talked about it just a second ago benny binion uh they consider him the brainchild of the world series of poker along with his sons jack and ted uh he began working on the idea of world series of poker in the 60s and held the first tournament at the uh, binion's horseshoe casino uh the game included five cards stud a game i'm not familiar with raz R A Z Z. Raz? Oh, gosh. I believe that's kind of like the backwards poker where the lowest okay. hand wins. Oh, like, lo- like low, low ball? Like kind of like a low ball. Okay. All right. Uh, so might be, I'd have to look that one up. Yeah. You Maybe know what? We'll, we'll look no, that up. Yeah, I'm going to look that right now. Yeah. Uh, five card stud, Raz, seven card stud, deuce to seven, low ball draw. That sounds just too too, <laughs> <laughs> too complicated. Much to play. <laughs> and uh, Texas Hold'em actually was back yeah, there. Okay. And uh, players like, as Adam mentioned, Johnny Moss. And uh, Johnny Moss had a um, a huge rivalry with uh, with Nick the Greek. Nick the Greek was also an odds maker here in town for a long time. Uh, and they were a huge rivalry, like ugly. Like, uh, okay. You know, yeah, yeah like they were good. Physical yeah. with the uh, uh, and of course uh, the, one of the, one of the first celebrities out there to play uh, of note. And this, this is for all, all you uh, 40-ish people out there. Gabe mm. Kaplan from Welcome Back, Cotter. Yeah. Huge player. In yep. fact, uh, Adam, still, yeah. Adam knows him yeah. knows him when he, I mention him. Uh, uh, like I said, a lot of celebrities yeah. uh, come to the World Series, and, and they kind of key on them uh, on the TV, obviously. So, yeah, yeah Gabe Kaplan's Absolutely. always on doing some kind of poker thing. Yeah, and he's like, uh, he's got to be pushing 80, right? He's, he's, yeah, he was old <laughs> 10 years ago when I was watching <laughs> Yeah, right. so I don't know. That's right. Uh, so uh, just real quick, um, yeah. Raz is a it's a low ball stu- uh, stud poker game. Low ball stud poker. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, so so some of the top rooms in town. Uh, any of you poker fans out there already know uh, Benny Binion's place, the Horseshoe, uh, which has changed tremendously. It's it's um, it's no longer the Horseshoe, and it's sad for us. Um, because it, it really was a, a standout in a place that is not a standout. Downtown is still not a good place. It's just not, it's just cheesy. It's, it's terrible. They're trying, but they're, it's not going to mm-hmm. work. Uh, the Aria, uh, which is becoming more of the high-end pit. Yeah. Uh, but um, I'm not thrilled with it. I don't like the room. It, it looks... No, it, I, I, I it's haven't too played open. poker there. Yeah, it's too open. It's right near the exit door. I don't uh, know. It's just it's strange. Uh, trying to get people in right at the door. Yeah. And uh, Bellagio, of course. Uh, Bellagio's uh, still big. Yeah, considered the peak. Um, uh, arguably so with the Mirage. So pretty close. Yeah, I played in both those rooms. Have you really? Yeah, how was the patronage in both? Um, it's pretty similar, to be yeah. honest. Um, yeah. I guess the the high higher end games mm-hmm. um I get a different patronage. Like at the Bellagio, you could find Phil Ivy there in the now high limit game. What game did, um, were you, do, did you jump in on? Like ten twenty or? I mean, um, in a no limit, yeah. the first level I think is like a one two no limit. Oh okay. Um, and how then, much is the buy in? Uh, for that could be minimum of a hundred. Okay. Um, the next step up would be a three five game. Okay. Uh, minimum of three to uh, you know a thousand dollars. That's that's where the kind of the money starts. Yeah. Um, I usually start with the lower limits. Yeah. Because uh, you can still you can still make a little money, yeah. um, and you don't have to you don't have to have a big bankroll. Now, are you a conservative player? I mean, do you do you wait? Do you wait for your opportunity? Do you wait for that hold? You have to kind of. All right. So poker is a little bit of a psychology game too. So when you sit down, you gotta have to. You have to know. You have to get to know the people. Yeah. And how much you can bet. Is it hard? Do you Um, think that's difficult in Vegas? You think it's difficult to sit down at a Vegas table? I mean, for the for the 
novice player, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you, you have to really kind of know the game before you sit down at a table, or they'll just eat you up. Now, now um, do you think the tables you sat down were full of novices? Um, no. No. I don't think so. Not at the higher limit rooms. Because wouldn't that the, be the harder? Better, the better rooms. You might find the novices at like like a Green Valley Ranch or something like mm-hmm. that. Maybe one of the, like, the Mirage would probably bring a lot of mm-hmm. novice players too, uh, as well as the yeah. good players. Because it's kind of one of those medium poker rooms. They got an influx of travelers. Right. You know, you could kind of pick off the guys with badges. Sure. You know? Sure. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you take off your badges when yeah. you play poker, guys, please. Exactly. Um, but yeah, you can make a little money on the one, two tables. I've walked with, you know, a couple of grand before. Really? Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah. On a good run. Okay. Um, yeah. I just, I would think it would be harder with uh, to sit down. You know, I mean, there's pros there. I mean, there, there's, sure. there's, 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 you know, people there's, that have, have their, that's their job. Sure. There's, you know, people that are at the same table every day. Yeah. Um, you know, if you ever watch the movie Rounders, yes. um, you know, you, you walk up onto a table and it seems like everybody knows each other. Exactly. And everybody knows each other's game. Yeah. So when you get the guy that does sit down and nobody knows, yeah, he gets ganged up on. Yeah, I guess so, that's true. So, so you got to know that going in. So you, you kind of have to play a little bit differently than you might at, at home. Uh, and you can't, you can't bluff good players. No, you really can't. Uh, well, well, I don't know. It's, it's tough. Well, at that point... I think you I think you can bluff, but you you have to I think the pattern of cards have to be in your favor. Uh, if they're not, if you don't have the cards, I don't I don't think you can. I, you know I, I, yeah. you know that it's it's hard to say. Now, what is it like to sit down for all the people listening uh, that have never done it and would like to do it or just want to know about this? What is it like to sit down at a Las Vegas table? So let's say you get past. Okay, so the first thing you do is you, it, it's it's very busy most of the time. So you put your name down. You say so. Usually there'll Adam. be a table list. Yeah, a table list. Okay. Um. So you'll walk up to the. They usually have like a concierge. Yeah. Or a, like a somebody will seat you. Yeah. Um. They'll take your name and they'll ask you what kind of table or what kind of game you're interested in. Um. And then you'll buy it. Um. They'll sit you at the table. They give you your chips. Um. You right. usually you know give your card to the dealer because right. every casino's got a card. Yeah. to track your play with okay uh and then you get all the dirty stares from the other poker players as you play your first hand and right. they try and feel you out right? right um and then you try and settle your nerves and try and just play poker you know without right. um giving away all your money and stupid bets um, that's what i do at like the orleans and like the smaller casinos mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sure what uh Cause, like the smaller casinos i don't know it feels more uh like folks are on your level there I, I feel like sure sure that's why i started most of my early poker at like green valley ranch or the yeah. locals places you know uh-huh. uh low yeah. limit you know uh or, or low denomination no limit mm-hmm. is what i like right um it keeps some of the randomness of poker out i think mm-hmm. um if you go to a limit poker table there's a lot more flops a lot more people seeing hands a lot more people catching things sure um that's why i like no limit poker as the best form yeah yeah, you can you, you can bluff more if yeah. you have the chips. Yeah. You can play a little bit differently. That's dangerous stealing folks uh, um, catch can, shit yeah. on, the, on the flop. It's you horrible. Can, you can push right. people out except for Sam because he's put days <laughs> with everything and beats me with it. Right. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. for again, for, for a newbie, for someone who's literally never sat down at a table. Yeah. So you get past, yes. the, you get past the concierge. The, you got your chips. You sat down. Yep. Uh, and, and, you know, you got, you got your Negranos and your Ivies and your, all the, all the wannabes sitting there. Yep. Um, so what do you do? I mean, what, what's the, what's this the first thing you do? The Yo, I win. <laughs> no, but, but <laughs> you, you get your cards. I mean, what, you know, obviously people want to get right in there and if you get great cards, if you get, if you hit pocket aces, what was that? One in, one in, what was that? 220 Two, to one. 220 to one. You get your pocket aces. Uh, but, but what, what so what should you do the hardest thing to, to let them know that you're there to play and you're to not, be serious you're, you're not a schmo the hardest thing about sitting down at a poker table in live vegas is knowing what to bet yeah. and when to do it yeah um if you sit down and you don't know the math to what you're betting right um say you sit down at a one two game mm-hmm. that's your blinds one and two yeah. and you bet your first bets fifty dollars right. right you're gonna scare everybody out 
Um, if you only bet four dollars, you're gonna have everybody call you. Uh, so you kind of have to know what the math is, right? And what to bet. So right. that's the hardest part for me, for 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 most novices. Okay. Uh, okay. To 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 really know the math. Okay. Uh, now, is it is it in a, an invite? I know all the rooms are different. Obviously, you know, I'm, I would not recommend a newbie to sit down in Mirage. Um, yeah. uh, it's wonderful to watch, but don't sit down. You know, go to a local uh, like a GVR or a G- Green Valley Ranch. But when you first sit down, is it a, an inviting scenario? I mean, is it? Fun? Um, it's not fun. Though, most is it? most yeah. poker rooms look inviting. Yeah. Um, you know they're usually pretty open and well lit mm-hmm. now, and they yeah. got a cute, yeah, cute they girl well working the uh, yeah. the counter, and they got the cocktail waitresses coming around. Right. right. So and then you sit at the table and you get to playing, and then you realize nobody's talking to each other. Right. You know everybody's very nope. serious. Yeah. Everybody's shuffling chips. Yeah. Sounds very fucking you know like a graveyard. Yeah. Uh, Everyone's like so serious. Super serious. They're, yeah. they're Nobody like talks pros. to each other. Um, mm-hmm. The dealer is the only one cracking jokes if you're lucky. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a weird environment if you're not used it to is. it. Yeah, it is. Um, but now, now if a person were to sit down, you know, a, a good piece of advice for your first hour of play, what would what, what would that be? Don't play a lot of hands. Right. Yeah. Stay out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, be patient. Be, be patient. Yeah. Be Just very patient. Out. Uh, see what other people are doing. Mm-hmm. Watch other, watch how they bet. Okay. Watch, uh, how they fold. Yeah. Watch what they do with their chips. You know, they're like, very which particular. Which one just learn their mannerisms? Yeah. Okay. And not just to know what they're doing, but just as a, like, um, what do you call it? Not courtesy, but uh, just so you know what you're doing at the table. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Tip the dealer. Well, that was, that, that's my second you, question. Now, now for a person, tipping, tipping is relatively... Uh, obvious for most of uh, uh, the live games in town uh, and for concierge, obviously, you know, but th- that kind of thing. But um, uh, when and how much do you tip a dealer? Um, poker dealer. Poker in dealer. in the poker specifically, because you're not playing against the house, you're playing against other players. Right. The house takes what's called a rake. Mm-hmm. And that's a portion of the pot based on how much is in the pot mm-hmm. up to a certain amount. And the casino keeps that. That's their vig. That's, that's right. their that's, that's their the percentage, juice. right? Yeah, that's the juice. Uh, yeah. And so, when you win a hand, if you win a hand, right, that's when it's customary to tip the dealer. Okay, um, you're gonna put in antes every other round or so, right? Um, but when you win a hand, it's that's that's when it's customary to tip the dealer. Um, if it's a big hand, you mm-hmm. know, you know co- accordingly, just mm-hmm. your tips. Um, you know, I throw them a couple bucks, yeah, per hand in the poker room. It's not like roulette. You don't buy in for chips, poker chips, okay. right? You buy in for actual money chips. Okay. So when you're tipping the dealer, you are tipping them an actual $5 chip. You are, okay. Yeah. And that's going to go into their pocket or into their bin, and they split or don't split. Okay. So that's, it's not like roulette. So okay. there you go. Okay, very good. I just wanted to bring that up because I, 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 I knew that. But uh, I, I thought uh, the article was wrong, but I haven't played poker in a right, very long time. Right. So. so, yeah, if but you're you're using actual chips. So if you excellent. got black chips on the table, they're 100 bucks a piece. Nice. Uh, that's a big game. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen a black chip in a while. Uh, okay, we talked about it earlier. Uh, the, the surge in poker, you know, obviously from 2003 to, to a couple of years after that was huge. Yep. Uh, and now it's leveled off and can even be considered on a statistical level, you know, it's on a downswing. Uh, in reality, why do you think that is? Why is it in a downswing? Yes. Oh, probably a couple of reasons. The buy-in, I would assume. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, crash the, the 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 crash notwithstanding. Yeah. So sure. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, the money in general went down. People didn't right. have as much money to spend. Um, but you know, it's still a ten thousand dollar buy-in. That's pretty hefty. Yeah. Um. I wouldn't say it dropped very much a percentage for sure. Um, but I think the interest is still there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, you know, these poker guys, you know, buying a bunch of their friends, mm-hmm. um, so that if they go up against them, it would, you know, be an easy win, mm-hmm. you know, Oh, I'll buy it. But if you, if you face me, you give me all your chips, right? You know, that type of thing. I, I guarantee that happens. Okay. Um, but I don't know. I, I would play if I if I had the money I would play. Yeah. You know, you can you can still get into the the main event via other tournaments. Mm-hmm. Um satellite tournaments, the low levels, you can still if you win you get, you know, the chance to 
to yeah. get into the to the main event. And people yeah. have definitely done that and won. Right. Um, you know, recently most most of those guys okay. do. Now the celebrity of it, you know, the the, the <coughs> pop and circumstance I think has rubbed off. I think it's it's no longer a shiny brass lamp. It's 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 you know I think it's kind of tarnished because it the, it didn't grow. It didn't grow beyond the first uh, group of guys. Well, I think I think when it hit that uh, that peak, mm-hmm. um, it brought in all these kind of, for lack of a better word, undesirables. <laughs> right. Um, and that would be why it kind of dipped a little bit because yeah. you didn't want to have to go to the poker room and spend four days with the you know all the douchebags. Sure. Uh, you <laughs> know. True. True. Um, and and I'll tell you that it's. It is grueling. You, uh, it, yes. That main event is ten days. Yeah. You don't play every day, but it, you play all day long on yeah. on certain events. So, yeah. it, you know, you got to have people with you that are backing you up, bringing you food, bringing you, yeah. you know, pain pills. Right. You, it's 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 grueling. Yeah. So yeah. Do we have like uh, the massage ladies walk around too? Yes, That's right. Most definitely. The yeah. massage therapists. Yeah, I've got a couple of friends that are actually that do that. Do you the know, poker massages? Yeah. Massage. They make good money. They no, do. No doubt. They no do. doubt. Yeah. Um, now have, have, uh, Sam, have you, uh, played online poker for money? <laughs> uh, I did before I used to play a full tilt. Okay. Yep. Full tilt. Yeah, ah, there's a controversial. Money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they owe some people some money. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. now, now you guys have both played online poker. For, have you played for money? Yes. Huh? Yes. Okay. Um, is it at all the same? In in any facet whatsoever, is playing online poker for money. There's that there's that mystique of losing or ma- or gaining money. Is it at all the same as sitting down at a live table? Barely, barely, barely. Okay. Um, online, you get uh, uh, much crazier people. They don't. Yes. They don't uh, necessarily have the same value. I guess. Uh-huh. Um, a lot of people pushing all in on the first hand yeah. per se in these tournaments. Right. Um, right. Uh, yeah. On, um, in person, it's very slow. Yeah. Um, you have to have patience. Sure. Um, especially if you fold a lot, uh, if you don't get the cards. Yeah. Um, you know, bring bring headphones. Bring <laughs> a book. I've seen people read. You know, VR uh, set. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, it can be a boring game. Yeah. That's why people don't enjoy at a casino. Well, that, you know, that at least at your house, you have other things you can entertain yourself with at the same time see when i play online i'm a total douche like i i talk so much smack online <laughs> right <laughs> see and then, and then you get a uh, troll people like sam yeah who just go all in with uh you know 10 7 offsuit okay and, and still beat you just for you adam just yeah. for you yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, sam you know he's uh <laughs> we know sam he's he already has a reputation with us um now should you shoot what lastly if you're a newbie and you've played, you've maybe played a house game, mm-hmm. and you beat your cousin. Right. Should you come here and play poker? Should you co- <laughs> should you come here and play live poker? Is it possible now, after the surge, after the crash, after everything we've talked about? Yeah. Is it possible for a newbie from Montana, <laughs> right, <laughs> to come here and have fun? Because ultimately, mo- these people aren't do- doing you, this for a job. They're sure. going to go back to Montana. Right. Um, stick at a low level. Yeah. You know, know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, yes, know, you can, know the hands. Yeah. You, yeah <laughs> it, it, know that two pairs are going to be one pair. <laughs> right. You know, uh, yeah. And you can definitely have some fun. Right. Um, you know, I have fun when I play poker. Yep. Um, it's not always like a grind or anything like that. It's, you know, it's fun for me. Yeah. Um, I haven't done it in a while just cause I haven't had the money to do it. Um, yeah. but we still play home games every, sure. you know, so often. And, uh, yeah. Definitely yeah. fun. Uh, okay. Just remember what they say. There's a chip. There's a chance. That's right. And and go. also, you can take some money with you. You can take money off the table. Yes. Whenever you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, all right. Let me let me take that back. So you can't just <laughs> like, if you have two hundred dollars in front of you, right? You can't just take fifty dollars and put it in your pocket. All right. Yep. You can't do that. You have to cash it all at the same time. Yeah. But in the gist of things you can take it and leave all right yeah if you have money in front of you you can leave with it exactly do so do so that's right see so, yeah that's the, the when uh, on the on the very few times i've gambled and won um i left i hit and left and tell you a funny story uh and this actually happened at green valley ranch i came in i bought in for 200 dollars. i sat down very first hand i got pocket aces 
Okay. Very first hand. At 220 to 221. <laughs> I tripled up. $600 on the very first hand. Should have walked. Oh, Spent dude. the next two hours bleeding it away. Oh, all right. Bad and left Yikes. with nothing. Bad okay. Adam. So don't do that. Uh, That's not good. You should have called for the dragon <laughs> change and then pull it out of the water. The problem with that is like you go to poker to sit down and play a few hands, right? And yeah. the first hand pocket aces. Yeah. Yeah, you feel like maybe you're going to have a great day, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. Just just take some with you. Take you some see, money with you. My the intrinsic problem to me with poker because I am a, I am a, a, an uber competitive person. I want to I, I, I if I can't win, I don't want to play. Right. And see the problem with poker did is Did you like the movie War Games? I did. <laughs> I did. That's sad. Uh yeah, shall we play a game yet? Uh, I, I can't necessarily beat that guy across the table. I can, but it's not really the, the, it's the, it's the, the factor of the cards. You know, if mm-hmm. I was playing a game and I was scoring points based on what I was doing, mm-hmm. I'd feel like I was beating this guy. I what about, what about tournament style? Cause eventually that does come down to a winner. Yeah, it, it does, but uh, I, there, it's the physicality of it. It seems very lazy to me. Hmm. All gambling is lazy, <laughs> obviously. But it seems, li- you know, and, and there's the, the only reason I hate this guy is the way he's dressed. It's not like it's, it's not like, like he's done like, anything like to you. Like the, the upcoming Dallas uh, Oakland game. Yeah, you know, yeah. the, I'm, I'm yeah. sure there's these guys on that they hate each other, <laughs> you know, or they hate each other that day. But there's, I, I have no feeling towards this guy. So, I mean, it, it's the competitive part that I don't understand from a poker player. Mm. Now, I'm sure there's you and Sam and, and all the poker players out there are going to scream at me. But, um, no, I just, there's just... I think, I think for me, it's not really about the person at the other side. Yeah. It's about playing the hand right and, right. and, and winning it, like, you know, yeah. the right way yeah. or, or bluffing and getting away with it, yeah. you know, that... Gives me a little bit of a charge. Right. Um, right. You know, flopping a big hand and then playing it right and getting everybody to like yeah. pay me off. Yeah. That's cool. Now, do, do, um, do you get into to sometimes poker tables get surrounded by people and people love to watch? And I mean, do you like the gambling scenario where people are screaming and having fun or do you like a nice quiet? I, I tend to you know, try and converse a little bit at do. the table. It's oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's a little, it can be a little dour, right? So it be <laughs> like, oh, just start a yeah. conversation with somebody and maybe you make a friend, right? But, right. uh, you know, he's trying to lighten the mood a little bit. You yeah. know, that's what I try. How and about do. you, Sam? Are you a talker? I can't imagine you sitting down and then starting to talk at a poker table. <laughs> uh, it all depends. It all yeah. depends on like what hand he wins. That's right. If he, yeah. <laughs> if he bluffed right. us right, he'll just slap it on the table like, oh, <laughs> you know, and then he'll just talk shit. Oh, uh, you don't drop the mic, oh. do you, Sam? No, nah, no need to. <laughs> no need to. Yeah, act like you've done it before, right? <laughs> act like you've been here, bro. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, last thing I want to mention uh, is you already mentioned it. You stole my thunder. No, oh, I'm just kidding. Got it. Uh, no, totally. Uh, <laughs> Rounders. Rounders. Best best oh, poker, best card film ever made. I believe so. You think so? Yeah. Um, I Edward, have Nor- Edward Norton's in it though, and he, and he plays the guy that the guy that I associate with yeah, Edward Norton with every poker like. <laughs> No, just Edward Norton. <laughs> uh, I think that's him. That's, that's a great character. His name's Worm, Worm, and he is yeah. the typical, um, you know, grinder. You know, he's got a bankroll one day, and then it's gone the next. Yeah. Um, you know, he's rich yeah. one day, and then he's poor the next. Okay. So, yeah. We're talking about the, rounders. The Matt Damon, Ed Norton, John yeah. Malkovich. P.A. Depp man is money. Yes. Um, and uh, So good. Yeah, fantastic. But uh, so that, so it's the best, huh? You think it's um, the it's, it's It's the closest that I can... That I've seen, yes, uh, to a real like in-depth World Series of Poker fighting, you know. Yeah. Uh, now, did did you see and how do you what do you rate like the movie Twenty One, which was a true story? Twenty One, I yeah, people. I yeah. actually really enjoyed I that MIT. one too. Was it was it MIT? No. Yeah, it was. Uh, no, they were they were pre college, I think. So the the one kid was make, trying to make money to go to I, Harvard, right? Okay. Right. But in real life, I want to say they were MIT. Okay. And this it was actually Ke- happened. Kevin Spacey played Kevin the... Kevin Spacey uh, was the, the bad guy teacher. The bad guy teacher. Yeah. yeah. He plays a good uh, villain. Um, yeah. I really enjoyed that movie too, uh, being a blackjack dealer. Yeah. Um, that's some, some heavy math involved yeah. there too. And Counting uh, decks. That's a lot harder than it's 
Oh, absolutely. Um, shown now, in that. They, they, uh, they, I just recently saw a few clips of that, a tremendous number of errors as far as town errors. Okay. Yeah, they were, they were, <laughs> there was one scene where it was clearly the hard rock felt and uh, somehow then they, then they did a close up of the chips and it was red rock. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And um, she said they were going to go up to their suite in the Hard Rock, and they were at Cherry, which is at Red Rock. Right. <laughs> so so some problems there. But uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of another poker film. What, what, what's another poker film? Sam, what's a poker film? <sighs> poker film. What is it? Where, where, where the, the whole, everything's riding on this hand. I'm trying to think of. All I'm coming up with are like pool hall movies. Yeah, pool hall junkies. <laughs> Adam's fit, the second, hustler. The hustler. You know, yeah, you know, all that kind of stuff. Now Vegas vacation, of course. But uh, uh, gosh, I'm gonna have to think about that. Yeah, poker, poker movies films. are few and far between. Maybe that's why Rounders is so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a it's a standout. It's yeah. a standout. Yeah, right. I love Matt Damon in that film. is uh, is great, and he ends up at the World Series of Poker at the end. He does. Yeah, trying to make a career out of poker. That's right. So, that's right. Yeah. But uh, yeah. another one that loops down to Vegas. Yeah. So we have some things going on in town. That, that, that surpass poker. We do. Yeah, we got a problem. Um, everybody's Besides uh, the Mayweather fight. Oh, yeah. Everybody's aware of this uh, movement. Um, uh, our friend Julia uh, sent me a text, and she says, how do I feel? And I told her how I felt. I may not be popular, and I may be you know, cutting off some of my listeners. Hopefully not. Um, but uh, the whole racism, slavery, um, political correct bandwagon that's sweeping through our nation and destroying our statues. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's hit Vegas. And I'm surprised because we don't have a lot of statues. Yeah, I was going to say, what is yeah. it? But I'm going to skip to the end of the list here because we do have, in, in lieu of a statue and in lieu of a monument, we have a logo and we have a school mm-hmm. that is the, that we are the UNLV running rebels now a while back it was a wolf with a confederate uniform on that changed then it became uh the running rebel the little guy Mm -hmm. Uh, i was incorrect he's not a minor he's just he's he was a confederate soldier he was a rebel he was a rebel Hmm. yeah and uh and that's that's problem so now they're talking about uh changing lv's logo well no they, they already did uh, in, in, in advance, well, I mean, in advance of this problem, they changed the logo to what we showed uh, on a previous podcast. I didn't realize that was why. Yes, that is exactly. But why. it's still, it's still a rebel. It is. You still know, a they rebel. haven't changed the name. Yes. Uh, maybe it doesn't look like, uh, you know, General Lee yeah. with his, you know, shooting his guns off. Right. Uh, well, they were worried about the symbolism, and it, it's a, it's a frightening admission by the, uh, by the, uh, by the college, by the university. Um, and I think they're kowtowing to what I think is a is a is a selfish movement. Um, it may yes, these things may represent slavery. They may, or absolutely represent a, a, a racist point of view by a historical person. But they are, they are our history, and they are certainly not symbols that are 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 calling for racism and calling for slavery to return. They are symbols of our history. Uh, and uh, and they and I believe they need to stay in place because they are teaching our children where we came from, lest we repeat ourselves. Yes, uh, and that that is the sole reason I believe this. Plus, I think we can avoid a lot of problems like Charlottesville uh, by leaving those damn things up. Now, does was Robert E. Lee a bad person? I don't know. Was he a part of our uh, an integral part of our history? Absolutely. And just as many subjects that I believe in, if you have a problem with it, don't walk past it. Don't watch it. Don't turn it on. Don't do whatever. But, but you're tearing down our history. It's, it's the bulwark of what the United States is, good and bad. Now, back to Nevada. Nevada became a state in the midst of the Civil War, mm-hmm. which is where the, the phrase battle-born model on the flag comes from. Uh, the, the, the Nevada flag. Yep. Uh, and uh, the process to grant Nevada statehood was expedited by union sympathizers who wanted more support for Abraham Lincoln during the 1864 election. That's right. They needed the votes. Exactly. So we are steeped in history of this particular subject. Yep. And we want to tear that all down and forget it. I, I don't understand that. I will not understand that. And I'm not su- I, I am not supporting slavery. I'm not supporting racism. I'm supporting our history, which is full of that. And so, therefore, 
we, we need these things. And and good Lord, I mean, how many monuments are you going to rip through? Yeah, you're going to go through the South and just yeah. rip them all down? Are you going to are you going to chisel out uh, you know a, a a picture of Trump on on uh, Rushmore? I mean, come on. You know, I tend I, to agree with you there on on our historical monuments, but what about what? How do you feel about the Confederate flag? They they fly that and you know. Pretty much the whole South, you know, during NASCAR races, you know, uh, on their trucks proudly. Um, you know, I, I, I think that's a little bit different because they're currently, you know, expressing them. They are. Like a, a past attitude. They right? are. You know. And I, I believe it does fall under and within the, 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 the freedom of speech. I believe it is an action that has to be accepted by us. Uh, that is, a, 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 it may be abhorrent. It may be just silly. It may be stupid. It may be whatever you wish it to be or think that it is. But I think is that person's right to do so. If he wants to represent, maybe he he's not representing slavery or racism. Maybe he's representing something else he believes the flag represents. But it is not the flag that's the problem. It is our people that is the problem. So if you have a problem with this guy flying the flag, then you need to deal with the guy. The, 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 the Union Jack, the yeah. Confederate flag, is a piece of our history. It, 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 it at one point was proudly flown. Now it is a piece of our history in museums. If people want to fly that, I believe in their right to do so. You know, I have a problem. I have a huge problem with American citizens burning the United States flag. But good Lord, mm-hmm. I have to say, you know, if I look at the law and look at the Supreme Court, they have the is right, to do, right so. to do that. So I there is. It, no, see, I thought it was illegal to burn a flag. No. That's what I was always growing up to say. Yeah, I think yeah, it's awful. Think it, yeah, I it's think not. it's awful. I think it spits in the face of the men who fought for it. But, sure. but that's my opinion. <laughs> that's my opinion. And the guy flying the Union Jack, that's his opinion. Now, if corporate, if corporations want to. N- not sponsor this guy's car and NASCAR if they want to back away from Trump. And that's you know, their option And too. that's their option too. Yeah. But yeah. but that's where we are. That's where we are. But but even beyond that, Nevada has, and L- L- not Las Vegas strictly, but Nevada has a, an increasing problem because we have Jefferson Davis Peak, which is a, in the Great Basin National Park that they want to rename. Okay. What, what, what is it again? Jefferson Davis Peak. Okay. In the Great Basin National Park, which is located in Nevada. They want to rename that because Jefferson Davis has a, a, checkered, a checkered past. Oh, sure. Also, we have Magruder Mountain, which is uh, named after, uh, and that's also in the National Park area of Nevada. Uh, it was named after J. Bankhead Magruder, who was also apparently quite a uh, supporter of... of a slavery. union sympathizer. Yes. And so, but we want to rename that. I'm just, I just, I, I don't agree. I don't agree that this is a constructive way to go about repairing. Handling that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um. Well, I mean, how far do you take that? Yes. When I mean, what is considered, yeah, you know, what is considered racist at that point? Right. Or, 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 you know, I saw one thing on Facebook the other day that had a picture of the pyramids. Right. And it said, we need to take down these monuments to slavery. Mm-hmm. You know, how far do you take it? You know, and how many people walked by Robert E. Lee's statue every day? Yeah. And A, knew who it was. Sure. And I really mean this. Yeah. And knew who the hell that was. Sure, he could have been a... Uh, a uh, not a confederate, but a union general. They, yeah, they, they don't even know. Maybe he was a statue from the, uh, the show Hamilton. Could have been a teacher yeah. or, a, yeah, who knows? <laughs> you know, right? How many people walked by, didn't know who he was? How many people walked by, knew who he was, didn't know what he did? And didn't know his place in history? Sure. You know, and my main point is that doing all of this, renaming, taking these statues out, they, they, not only are you, are you covering up our history, but it's ineffectual. It is not going to repair this nation. So, well, all it's doing right I, now. I, is I agree there. Like, I mean, it's already part of history. Yeah. What's the point of erasing it? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You know, Sam's uh, uh, Sam's chi- uh, background uh, is is chi- Chinese. Yes, then, uh, and um, half uh, Chinese, half Thai. That's right. And see, what I I, I, I think Adam and I should start a uh, start a uh, a movement to remove all the railroads <laughs> because it reminds us of uh, of uh, how your ancestors built everything. <laughs> on it. You know, I mean, it's just that it's silly. silly. Yeah. yeah, it's just that silly. We're cutting our noses off despite our face. More to the point, we're 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 getting bogged down in things that aren't. That don't helping. fucking matter. They don't That's work. That's not helping. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they don't work. 
but uh, but there are uh, bigger issues than statues. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Big, oh and my that's gosh. what we need to fix. To, that's right. To, that's yeah. right. The, yeah, huge issues. Huge issues. Like why we can't think of another poker film. I don't know. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, that uh, serious gear grinder, but a gear grinder nonetheless. Uh, Area Fifty Two. Yes. We'll we'll end with a nice Las Vegas story. Uh, I believe it's still there. I have not seen it in in, uh, many, many a moon, but I have seen it in the past. There is a black, a black, there is a brass plaque commemorating the first telephone installed in Las Vegas in 1907. Okay. And it could have, it could be seen or can be seen uh, in the southwest corner of Fremont and Main Street. I believe it's still there. They may have placed it up on a building because of all the things that are going on. Sure. But, uh, but uh, the, the plaque was attached to the exterior of the Golden Gate Hotel uh, and Casino in the, in the 80s. But I think they've moved it since because the Golden Gate has uh, undergone some major, major changes. Okay. Uh, the Golden Gate uh, was opened in 1906. And in uh, uh, and a 1907 Kellogg brand telephone, a cousin of the hand crank original, all right, uh, has been placed in its lobby uh, oh, at really? that time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the phone was located at one Fremont Street, and the phone number was one. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so 1907. That's right. Nice. They uh, yeah. what I did what I did look for and I couldn't find it. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it's hiding with uh, poker films. Uh, was who either placed or what was the first call received? I was gonna say <laughs> I don't know. Who were they calling? It. I couldn't find. Was it. this because uh, was this like the first you know railroad through Vegas? I guess. Well, they 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 placed it. It was arranged by the the owners of the Golden Gate at the time, uh, and uh, the Kellogg people put it in there. Uh, I believe it was sort of a test market for how things were going to work, and obviously you know uh, Las Vegas then kind of. Just continued to grow from there, so yeah, uh, yeah it's a lot like uh, Deadwood and and the Telegraph. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, but uh, Las Vegas has a wonderful past, and uh, and not to belabor the point, uh, we should keep all of it um, because Correct. we learn from all of it. It's amazing the things that we can learn when we read them and look them up. And um, if walking by a statue of Robert E. Lee sparks an interest Some in, in yeah, learning to, civil to war look history, him up. Yeah. more power to that person. Yeah, I agree. But, um, but uh, don't, Sam, don't it was... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, sorry, I was going to just say, don't forget uh, the history, you know? Just yeah, yeah. You know, no, learn. Continue no. to learn. It's the only thing we have uh, left <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when okay. all is said and done. Uh, Sam, thanks for joining us again. I uh, appreciate you being here. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. See you later, buddy. Yep. And, All uh, right. You guys have a good day. You too, Sam. You too. Thank you. See ya. And uh, Adam, uh, we'll be back next week. Um, I think we're going to do a short one because I uh, a little bit of traveling to do. Sounds good. Uh, but we'll figure out some fun stuff to do. And uh, if you have any questions, folks, or anything, comments, please send those in, uh, even just to say hi. We love to hear from all of you. And uh, keep those downloads going. And um, I, I'm actually considering, uh, if people will let me know, I'm actually considering um, if you've noticed, I have worn a T-shirt uh, with the uh, Pod Bay Door logo on it. Uh, uh, it's the red eye with the microphone. Uh, let us know if you would like um, uh, be interested in that, and uh, we can start making those available. So please let me know, and uh, Adam and I can make those arrangements, or maybe even a mouse pad. Those there you go. Cool. I yeah. have one of those. Nice. But uh, yeah, thanks some for s- some sweet gear with our logo on that's it. That's right. Thanks for uh, listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Thanks to everyone listening and watching. You can catch the Pod Bay Door on the Podbean app or any of your favorite podcast apps, including iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, and Stitcher Radio. You can watch the show on our YouTube channel at the Pod Bay Door Podcast. Please download, like, and subscribe. Our social connectivity screen is coming up. Check in with us on Facebook, Twitter, and WordPress. The Pod Bay Door is closed and... Talent is out. Hey, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning into the show. We would love to hear your show suggestions and comments. If you're watching on our YouTube channel, please click to subscribe. You can also connect with us on Facebook using at PBD Podcast, on Twitter using at TPBD podcast and on WordPress at thepodbaydoor.wordpress.com.